Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Sami Soppela and uh, I'm with Sofin Consulting. We're this German company from Finland. And uh, so far we have been doing these a little bit more special entities in the projects. And for example, here are some of the stuff we, are do we have done so far. Uh, in 2 m 2 our scope was to define the fabrication shape for the steel structure and then provide the geometry control services during construction. Uh, in Radio Port, the underpass, we did the concept design checks and then the parameterization for the client. Uh, in Israel, uh, we did this form finding for this multi-span suspension bridge and then the construction stage analysis and then we have this crazy <laughs> crazy gable state bridge where we did we did the uh, independent uh, erection control plans and then the uh, analysis model verification this was crazy thing. Uh, then we participated with pentagon design and rumble uh, in this design competition uh, unfortunately, it didn't go through, but it would have been cool. And the latest, we are designing this uh, Hessunisalme bridge in Finland, near Turku, if anyone knows. So first we did the concept design, and then we uh, got the detail design as main design designers, and we're doing it with A3 and LAP. Okay, now that we have warmed up, my agenda for the day is to give some uh, background for the project, the Kroon Warren Silda Bridge, and then what is our scope in that project, and uh, in the end, a little bit about incremental launching. Okay, here is the bridge, how it's hopefully gonna look like in the end. Uh, so it started. Uh, 10 years ago and it's part of this bigger development project and here we have the bridge there and the original designer was WSP and Knight Architects and then the contractor is Create and UIT joint venture and we are contractors uh, consultant as well as Rumble. Here are so some specs about the bridge. Uh, we have the cable state bridge in the middle uh, and then the approach bands here in the east and then on the west and we have currently been launching these eastern approach bands and uh, three spans have already been launched and I don't know maybe next week or was it two weeks from now the fourth span. Uh, the deck is something like this, 2.7 meter high steel girders. We have tram line, cycle path and walkway. And the original plan uh, was that we uh, launch the approach bands and build the cable state part uh, with cantilever method. But uh, let me tell you already at this point that it would have been crazy complex to build this because the deck geometry in the cable state part uh, it's curved in plan, so normally you just control the vertical vertical thing when you build it. So the contractor uh, wanted to change the uh, cable state part to be built on temporary supports, uh, mainly due to the uh, schedule, but it's al already also much more easier to build on temporary supports, and they can build the deck at the si same time as they built the pylon. All right. Then our scope. Our scope was to uh, define the fabrication shape for the deck. And without going too much into detail about that, uh, the cool thing we did with Rumble with this uh, Rumble uh, is the Rumble was the contractor's uh, designer, and they produced the shop drawings. So, you know, as Quid already mentioned, that when we're doing bridges, everything changes all the time. We need to uh, update our model and we, t we need to know that where the changes are, how much, how we can easily see where the changes are. And then uh, 
we went that now that we define our fabrication shape in the model so then we need the easy way to get that to rumble because they're using Tecla and they want to produce the uh, shop drawings with that so we went that uh, we just get the data from Sophistic and put it in the grasshopper and then deliver the fabrication shape with those binary coded data backs to rumble and then they got it and it was automated in sort of a way that we press the button we have the uh, shape here and then we deliver, de uh, deliver it to them and then they press the button and the drawings are updated then our second scope is the geometry control and what is geometry control uh, you know every time we do construction we have construction errors and how do we know that we will get the bridge in the end that we wanted and I would say that we need to analyze it and in order to analyze it we need to know that where the structure is at uh, specific construction stages and the guy who monitors it at the site he cannot know that what do we need when we uh, calibrate our model so we need we needed to do pretty careful planning beforehand that what kind of monitoring data we want and uh, that have gone pretty well so far okay now that we have the model calibrated at the specific construction stages uh, how do we get that updated model and updated model the site so that the data is as rich as possible and not using millions of rows of excel sheets and just numbers so we went for ifcs so we deliver to the site for the contractor ifc models for uh, from these particular construction stages and i can already tell that they're loving it they really like really like it and they're actually they're using it so they're not going to garbage bin mm -hmm. but they're actually using it and that's been very cool and now they're asking even more and more that they can can we get data from this from this position what if the construction stage is this can can you print those IFCs from that so it's cool to hear that they're actually using those to sum it up uh, geometry control so we're helping to control uh, contractor to build the bridge as planned and then end up with the bridge as planned I believe that the client would like that too mm -hmm. all right then about incremental launching why why the deck geometry was challenging first thing uh, is this uh, polyline segments because uh, they will fabricate the uh, steel girders in these polyline segments so picture this that you're you have a snake with kinks and you're push it, pushing it into the tube so it will not go smooth once you're uh, launching it radially here and then we have the S shape over here which was pretty tricky because you know when you're launching radially and you have the S shape uh, you can't move the uh, launching bearings at that launching platform where they're setting up the new segments because you, every time you push you would need to move the uh, bearings at the launching pad so it doesn't follow and then uh, against the uh, radial launching curve we are having here this last support is not perpendicular against that radial uh, launching curve but it's perpendicular for the uh, final geometry so that was that was pretty uh, tricky so here's the how the launching goes and we are currently at this stage at the moment And soon you will see that uh, we will get that S shape here so it doesn't go over the bearing so we are pushing it as a cantilever okay uh, then in reality 
uh, we do have that fabrication shape at the site. So we need to include it also in the analysis model. And due to that, we are also bound to use more or less nonlinear springs because we don't want that the springs will pull the structure down when we are launching, but instead of we want that they will all, all uh, only uh, support it. So first thing, uh, why it's important the why we need to use uh, pre camber shape in the launching is the nose angle because uh, once we go further and push the cantilever over the support the nose starts to dive and bend and when we have uh, this uh, camber shape of course this is magnified tremendously but we need to know that when we will hit because we need to hit And here you can see the context. So it will, the nose angle was really important to uh, determine. The second thing about those uh, bearings, you can see here how it uh, drops down from these uh, launching bearings, bearings, which are at the launching pad. And the last, but the most important thing is that uh, when we are starting to uh, add new segments at that launching pad here. We need to know that in which direction we put those new segments. Because if we have and we must have the camber shape so it can point, this can point up and it can also point down. So if we have in the model only the system, the uh, ideally straight geometry, how how on earth they know at the site that in which direction it, they need to connect the new segments. So this is this is really important. But is this only effect we're gonna get? No. Uh, so the direction here uh, we need we are connecting the new segments uh, stress free. But what happens to the tail? These, both of these main girders, they start to point, uh, at least in this project, they uh, start to point in different directions. And we must control this, because if you connect these like this, it's not the same structure anymore. And how do we do that? We check here, where we connect those new segments, so, so that the, these both tails uh, point in the same direction because otherwise we don't have the same structure anymore. So a little adjustments there as well. But is this all? And the answer is no. We are starting to get this twisting here and uh, it could be included in the camber shape but uh, now we haven't considered it but this comes pretty nicely along when we uh, jack those tails uh, to point in the same direction. And the angle is it's really, it's really, really small. So uh, this doesn't affect that much. Okay, uh, then how do we co uh, consider these construction errors? We have this uh, ideally uh, theoretical shape uh, in the model. And then we need the monitoring data. And uh, then based on these, we can calibrate our model at this particular uh, construction stage or whatever stage. So we're getting uh, the monitoring data here in these uh, red plates. And then we just we calibrate the model so that we are uh, our current situation in the analysis model uh, matches this one because this is extremely important that we get the uh, right direction for the new segments. And uh, the monitoring points we have had have been these two bottom points and then we have just extruded this plate in Grasshopper uh, to get the visual element in the IFC. So 
we're not getting these kind of plates, we're just having two points. And so far, uh, when, we ha when we had launched two spans, uh, the difference is uh, reality versus uh, theoretical one was uh, six millimeters, two millimeters and so on, so pretty good. And at this stage, after three spans, I would say that this, this side is pretty much okay. Uh, here we are a little bit low, but uh, it's in the mid span, so we we can't affect, it, affect that uh, too much, but remember it's 63 meters span and it's less than two centimeters, so I would say pretty, pretty well. All right, thank you. Uh, any qu easy questions? <laughs> <laughs>